Last year, I won a competition on Facebook to go to the factory, the home of Encon, up in Stromsund in the middle of Sweden. It's an exciting opportunity. I saw so much this weekend that I can't show you on here and learned so much, but I'll share with you what I can about this brilliant facility. The buildings are actually scattered over several areas and there's lots of different buildings where they make different components. You've got the top hitches here. This is uh, as they come in welded up. There isn't actually a foundry or anything um, like that at the factory. These components are all um, made up and then brought in for uh, assembly here. There is a lot of machining done. You can see these are the kind of heart of the tilt rotator there and they're all machined up in these. They've got several of these crazy um, CNC lathes and yeah, awesome. Automatic drill bit changing. Um, it's difficult to see here through the through the glass, but uh, trying to show you that's it drilling out for the, the head of the motor. And there's about eight of these things going on at a time, some of which are robotic fed. You then get this unit here that's been faced, um, machined. Um, that's its worm drive unit. Um, and they get checked obviously for quality at this stage. These are all bushings that are due to go in. They're all brass bushings. Uh, so many parts in this factory. Um, you walk around and want to stuff your pockets full of them. And you know how expensive they are. Um, some faces of the tilt rotator body get laser hardened. Um, and that's what you can see uh, from this machine here. I've got a better shot of, um, uh, of, of this machine working in a second, but um, yeah, the, the faces get laser hardened uh, a couple of specific areas. Um, yeah, this is a machine here um, doing its work. It's quite an impressive technique, really, um, that they've obviously deemed that that, that needs to happen in, uh, in a couple of areas. I think it's between the slew ring uh, plate uh, and the actual tilt rotator body itself. So quite impressive manufacturing. Um, the bodies then uh, all get machined up, they've threaded by this point, um, and they get sort of pre-cleaned as such. This robot takes them through a, an aqua cleaner um, before they are then ready, essentially, for painting. Um, it's, it's quite crazy seeing these, these robots. That's just emptying out the water from, from the tilt rotator itself, you know, the, the body, just making sure it's not caught in any nooks and crannies um, before it'll actually stack it on a, on a pallet and then someone can come with a forklift. Of course, these things work, you know, all night. Um, yeah, it's really cool to see, uh, see that automation. There is a lot of uh, human manufacturing going on here as well, um, but uh, they use robots for the more mundane stuff where they can. So these are all um, tilt rotators ready for painting. Uh, they all get masked up, plugged up, um, and they are ready for painting. What I didn't realize is just how many different colors you can get these things in, um, which, is, uh, which is pretty cool. So you can get all kinds of colors as shown here. There's, there were loads of them dotted around. As we were going around the factory, there was um, yeah, tons of different colors about, um, which is yeah, interesting to see and something I didn't know. So these are all the uh, all, all bottom hitches there um, for units and, and they then get put on shelves and they await um, assembly. So um, once they they kind of manufacture things in batches and then and then they're waiting uh, yeah waiting for for assembly as as and when required. Uh, that's the new QS30 180 um, bottom hitch that's uh, that's on will will actually be now on my ECO2 tilt rotator myself. So we were having a chat about what's different on that and um, it actually solves that issue I have where I keep breaking the quick hitch ram because um, it's a slightly different design of quick hitch, which is. Uh, Good to see they've improved that, so nice to see that in the factory. Um, this is a 204 unit, so the one slightly up from the size that I run. Um, that's it kind of starting to be assembled there. Um, and yes, yeah, this, this is a slightly bigger unit. Uh, you can see the grease um, the grease ports. I didn't realise that all of these are actually, they're almost sort of valved so that when you put a pump of grease in, it distributes the grease unevenly. So depending on what needs more and what needs less grease. Um, so you do whatever, however many pumps it asks you to do, three pumps, whatever it is. And then that valve block will distribute that um, in the right amounts to each part of the tilt rotator, which I thought was a really neat uh, little thing and of course works with the auto greasing systems as well um, if you had auto greasing on there they can do that now through EC oil um, really really clever and it even knows when you drop the tilt rotator off not to then grease the tilt rotator it's got like a return line so really um, yeah just little details like that that I had no idea about it's obviously not available on my little ECO2 but um, yeah it's pretty cool to uh, to see 
So, yeah, and there's a lot of details like that that you see. Um, I, I didn't, I could have filmed more. You always think I could have filmed more. Um, but, it, you know, as you're trying, to, you're trying to learn, you're trying to be interested yourself as well, sort of on the day, it's always difficult to, to pick all these things up. Um, these are top hats for, um, I think they're EC02 ones, um, all bushed up, ready to go. Again, that's all kind of built um, next to the next to the line. That's uh, the body of an EC02. Of course, I was more interested in that sort of size because that's what I run. It's really cool to see it in bits. Um, but they're all built by like two guys um, stood in, in their own station. Um, they make EC02s at this end of the line and they make the big boys... Um, you know, the 219s and the bigger 225s, whatever they are. I can't remember all the numbers now, but um, they make those different um, points along this sort of long corridor. So um, the people that make your ECO2, if you've got one, um, are probably the same that made mine. Uh, that's the worm drive unit and the, uh, yeah, the, 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 the kind of the drive um, ring that's, yeah, really, really nice. Actually a brass alloy mix. Um, yeah, really, really cool to see them. That's a bit of bling. Um, you'd like to have one of them hanging up. He's uh, taking a photo for the gram there as well, trying to do multiple things at once. It was a busy old day, this. Um, but yeah, uh, you, you just walk around the factory and you see, you know, the pride these guys take in, in making these units. Uh, so that's a bigger one um, that's kind of more assembled. You can see the EC oil block on the top. Um, all of the detailing that goes into the inside of that tilt rotator. I mean, they are expensive, but there is a lot of work that goes into that unit as well. And then they've got all of their bolts and components and everything like right next to them. So that kind of shows how the how the line works really, um, and how they yeah basically you know one man will build that build that unit. There is a bit of pre-assembly done um, just after painting. They kind of bolt a few bits uh, into it. Um, but pretty much everything else is then assembled uh, and put together at this point. Um, there were boxes of uh, EC oil blocks, which are thousands and thousands of pounds. But um, there's a uh, there's an ECO2. Um, that's a new type with a new style quick hitch, um, ready for its stickers and testing. This is the testing area. They've got a hydraulic uh, bench and they they test and put all the units through testing. Sadly, there wasn't anyone doing that when we were we were there at the time. We were there on a Friday afternoon, so. Um, just like the UK, uh, the uh, weather was good and the guys all wanted to get out. So there wasn't a huge amount going on there, sadly, at that time. Um, this is the parts uh, department. So they have everything here. If you need a part, this is where it will be shipped from. Um, and pretty much everything they can get um, from, with you know, next day down to, uh, down to the UK. So crazy when you know how far away in the world Stromsund is um it's a beautiful part of the world but it but it does feel an awful long way from uh, from civilization sometimes and yeah you know all these parts are there and i mean of course dealers keep a lot of good stock of these things but um yeah odd odd things i mean they keep everything in there obviously they're building them there um but even for older um older units this was um this was a, one of the, the warehouses. They had some some buckets and some old sort of demo stuff kicking around. Um, quite interesting. That bucket was absolutely huge. Uh, I can't remember how much it weighed now, but you can see how, how big that is. Um, I think it's for a 20 tonner. Yeah, huge bucket. Anyway, the next day we then went, uh, what an opportunity this was, to Big River Camp. And this is typical Sweden, really. Um, real heart of Scandinavia stuff, just up the road from Encon. Um, this cool old loading shovel. All the machines out there are so well kept. Uh, maybe the cold weather must preserve them. But yeah, real, real tidy uh, machine that was. Um, and we went snowmobiling, which was just absolutely really, really cool. Sad I didn't get any filming of the snowmobiling. Um, I was just having too much fun and you just can't do everything and enjoy the experience, can you? But what a time this was. Um, yeah, stayed the night Big River Camp. That was an absolutely awesome opportunity. So I really have to thank Encom for their hospitality. I had a, a great four days and it's a long old way up there. Uh, you have to fly from, we well, flew from Heathrow to Stockholm and then Stockholm um, uh, up to another town. You have to drive to Stromsund itself. So um, yeah, really cool. And I got to see uh, the headquarters of Encom, um, which, was, which was great. Meet the marketing guys, uh, went to the testing facility. The, 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 what the guys do in there, 
at that testing facility is is brilliant and as somebody who enjoys his engineering that is uh, that is some facility in there really cool to see how they test them talk about like what actually fails and like how much force they have to put through these things to, to fail we worry in the uk you know it's a fairly fairly new product oh we're gonna break it it's a bit delicate trust me what i learned in there and the forces that it will put up with before it actually breaks you would you would be very unlucky um, to be able to do that, to be honest, if you've got the right tilt rotator fitted to the right machine. It's just, it's just quite a rare, uh, rare thing. I know there have been issues in the past with um, bosses and things, for example, and that's something they've worked on, they've improved. I don't think that's gonna be a problem in the future. Looking at the way that they've sort of modified that, I saw the new, the new hitches. The work they've done with the new EC oil um, on the on the bigger tilt rotators, especially um, getting flow using this like two ports you can use to get your hoses in, depending on whether you want them internally or externally mounted. Um, the way it joins, um, sort of, it's, it's almost like a hydro rail in a way inside the hitch. Anyway, lots of new stuff coming out, which is really really cool um, uh, to see for especially for high flow attachments and the way they're getting oil now from the machine and through that tilt rotator. Um, yeah, it's, it's really cool to see. Also saw quite a bit on the new sort of S40 stuff. Um, yeah, that's going to be exciting as well uh, when all that's released. So really good to see um, what's up and coming. The technology um, with the new DC3 system, which is I've talked about, so I can talk about that. Um, yeah, re really cool uh, with where they want to go with it and the potential for what you can do with all of that. So that was exciting. Um, shame I couldn't film any of it, but obviously understanding uh, you gotta gotta protect some stuff of you. So uh, really, but really good to see, and the opportunity to go snowmobiling was really really cool. Uh, we ended up having having food out there, lunch uh, on the trail as such, cooked on a fire. Just a beautiful scenery. What's noticeable is it's really quiet, so there's no like flights over there, the overhead or background motorway noise or it's just a really really beautiful place um and yeah really enjoyed uh, my time there so uh thank you very much again to to encom for for what you do um and i mean yeah thanks for coming up with these systems because it's been something that has helped my business hugely um and yeah i i couldn't i couldn't be without it now on um on my on my mini digger especially it's just been it's been fantastic and it's revolutionized the way that I work uh, and the, the money it's improved at the end of the day. Um, I earn more money with it. So, yeah, not um, not been a bad investment, really. Took a bit of uh, getting over the line. But once you understand uh, how to make it work for your business, I guess, uh, yeah, there's there's no going back. I, I certainly I couldn't own a, uh, yeah, uh, my three ton machine, my main machine without uh, a tilt rotator now. Uh, and yeah, the Encon 2.0, uh, ECO2, sorry, too many numbers in my head. Um, the ECO2 I run uh, is is the best for the size of machine that I run. So yeah, it's been um, it's been cool to uh, be a user of the product and also now to see how they actually go about uh, manufacturing, assembling and uh, testing these products out and where it all comes from and just how small and uh, community based that all is it, it really uh, yeah didn't it, it, the whole of Strumsund is is pretty much <laughs> as anyone everyone knows someone who works for Encon um, it's uh, it's had that much of an impact on what would have otherwise have been I guess a relatively small town um, so yeah really cool to uh, to see that um, so anyway hope you enjoyed this video uh, it's been a bit bit different uh, it was difficult to film. I probably always could have filmed more, but it's it's tough enjoying yourself um, and also trying to get uh, footage for a potential video and sort of what you would film and what you can film and all that sort of stuff. So hopefully it's made sense. Um, yeah, if anyone ever gets the opportunity uh, to go out there, I would definitely recommend it because uh, people are really friendly, food is great, and it's a really cool uh, experience to see. So anyway, uh, I will catch you in the next one. Thank you very much.